We're glad to know you're still there. It's still the breakfast, and like this, they sang somewhere, uh, last, last, everybody, good job, breakfast. It seems that is what is happening to us in Nigeria right now. Everybody seems to be struggling to make ends meet. And because of that, uh, the NLC is threatening nationwide strike, and they're demanding the reversal of petrol price, among other things. That's not just the only thing that they are talking about. We're glad to have today the uh, um, chairman, Ratau, Lagos State, and PRO NLC Lagos, in the person of Comrade Ishmael Adejumo. Good morning and welcome to the program, Comrade. Thank you very much for having me on your breakfast show. It's my pleasure to be here. Okay. Federal government is asking for more time. Labor is saying it has to be 2nd of August. Let us know what the mind of NLC is regarding the issues that have been tabled before the, the government and the call from the federal government that you should give them more time. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, I want to first and foremost uh, appreciate uh, the General Labor Congress leadership and uh, the workers in general and the masses for this long time patience. We have been quite very patient with this government and you agree with me that uh, prior to the first increment that came up, that labor threatened to embark on a strike and a protest, but it was averted because of the intervention of uh, very senior uh, citizens and uh, veteran comrades who believe that it is still a early in this uh, administration to start the government with, uh, without any form of uh, confidence in the leadership. And that was the part we told. But unfortunately, the committee that was set up by the government uh, to work out the the, the, the palliatives and the social interaction committee that will cushion the effect of the removal of the subsidy has seems to have been abandoned. It seems to have been abandoned because uh, government now, you know, are going in a bit different direction, which is giving the, the, the masses and the civil society and all other uh, well meaning Nigerians concern that this pain is too much we are being pushed almost to the wall. The workers cannot survive anymore. To commute from your place of work to back to your uh, home is becoming very difficult. And uh, even to sustain feeding on a daily basis for a worker, not to even talk of people who don't have a paid job, is becoming so strenuous and uh, is becoming unbearable. It is at this very critical juncture that the leadership of Nigerian Labor Congress Arising from a Central Working Committee meeting held on Tuesday, took a decision that uh, there is need to give government seven days notice, at least to revert this last increment. Let status quo until remain, based on the initial agreement to go into dialogue, work out the implementation framework for this subsidy removal, and at least pushing the effects in the interview before the increment in minimum wage and all other palliatives. That is the position of NLC. It's very simple. And if you feel the pulse of an average Nigerian today, everybody is agitated. And we don't want Nigeria to be thrown into chaos or a situation whereby the, the government that just came in on a renewal that we so much believe is going to deliver on its mandate have been uh, frustrated with uh, agitation. So we are not... Uh, People, Nigerian Labour Congress in particular, disposed to constructive dialogue, engagement with the government that would bring a fruitful uh, result that would be beneficial to not only the workers but the citizens in general. So okay. that is the position. Yeah. Very clear. Yeah. The, the, the position is clear, but your, your demands are numerous, a lot of them. Uh, one of them is. Uh, on the fuel subsidy removal, uh, the palliative and all that, to revert to the old pump price, which, uh, if you ask me, is not in the hands of the government anymore. There is this deregulation, which means that the government has no hand in this. It's the private sector that is driving this. How do you want the government to remove uh, the, the price and return it to 
the status quo as you're calling it, when it is out of their power? Uh, in a completely deregulated economy, as you know, uh, I don't think uh, even the NMPC have the power to go about fixing the price. If truly we have been completely deregulated, the forces of demand and supply will determine what the pump price will be. And of recent, after the first uh, increment that led to negotiation for government to, you understand, the government have licensed some other uh, people to import fuel into the country with a view to break the monopoly of NMPC. NMPC cannot be the seller and the buyer. Do you understand? That is the position of NSC. There is no transparency in that. Let all that players in the industry compete and we'll be able to at least assess the, the, the flow of importing and exporting. But the bottom line where labor is concerned is the area of our refinery. If our refinery are working, if it is is true, it's one of the conditions for the suspension of the last strike. If a particular refinery is working optimally and maybe worry refinery, this will have pushed the, the effect of importing and exporting, which is taking the price out of the reach of an average Nigeria. We can't be a, a, a oil producing nation and will be suffering because of poor uh, management of our refinery. The four nation refinery are in comatose, and we have been promised that by the end of this year, what I call refinery will come on stream. If that come on stream, then it will leave the, 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 the body. Look at recently now from uh, 560 something naira, the, the price jack up to about uh, six something in some states. And that is how it will be going. But if the local production is well uh, managed, it will reduce the burden of import and export, which is putting more stress on our foreign exchange. Hmm. So that is the position of the labor. OK. But labor Simple. also asks for uh, 200,000 Naira minimum wage. And um, we know that 30,000 Naira has not been implemented, at least by a lot of states. How practical do you think, or practicable do you think that might be uh, in this uh, economy? We're, we're struggling. That's what the government keeps saying, that we don't have money in this country. And that's one of the reasons the fuel subsidy was removed. So now, how do you think that will be attainable in the situation that the government finds itself? Thank you very much. The issue of minimum wage is a matter of law. Every five, five years, it is statutory for government to review the minimum wage of workers in line with the current economy reality. The current economy reality of Nigeria today is that 30,000 is no more feasible. Everybody knows that. Both the public and private sector employer knows that you cannot go to uh, market with even 30,000 and get a bag of rice today. So therefore, the minimum wage review is due next year. But the situation we find ourselves now is that the government, it becomes imperative for government to remove subsidy. Good. Removing this subsidy, it has to come with some palliatives. And these palliatives should have been rolled out in tranches, at least to start with before the outright remover. What the labor is saying is that it's like you want to give somebody an injection. You don't just carry the needle and shook it like that. You need to rub the surface, make it soft in a way that when you put and put the, the, the needle, it will go softly and the person will not feel too much pain. That is the position of the labor and all the citizens read that. The subsidy of a thing is what we believe should go because of the 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 the, 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 the corruption and the the, the the shady deal that is engulfed with the whole process. Now, it who comes to equity must come with clear hand. We want the government to engage the labor in this very uh, issue, which is ongoing. But it seems the government have deviated and abandoned the committee. But as of yesterday, we heard that the government have invited the union leaders because of this notice, to come back to the table and dialogue and resolve the issue once and for all, so that Nigerians, we, you understand, we overcome this pain. This pain is too much. 
It's too much. People are people are dying. Some are dying of hunger. I must confess to you. It depends on the area you are. Do you understand? So the, the 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 injury to one is injury to all. It's not only the working class. Everybody is affected, both the public and the private. Um, so the minimum wage of 18, if the governors who are collecting new allocation now run into billions, cannot justify by paying the 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 the, the, the required minimum wage that's approved by law, then the, the, the are citizen who is voting them and re-electing them should, should, should check themselves. Mm. But the Nigerian government at the national level have been very, very magnanimous. I've been coming to terms that these governors who are collecting allocation, they are not being properly checked through their state assembly and necessary agency to collect allocation and their part. Nothing is really impacting the lives of some of the states. So if I fail to pay 30,000 minimum wage, I wonder what will happen now. That some of them, the last allocation for the month of uh, June, run into billions. About yeah. triple, or I don't know. Yeah, almost I, triple. Going to them they, and they local government. How is this going to impact in the lives of people? We're hearing that they are giving 8,000, 10,000, as the case may be. What can you do with 10,000, my brother? 8,000. You can't feel. 8,000. 8, you can't fill, uh, you can't buy uh, a 10 liter of fuel hmm. with this new rate with 8,000. Okay, um, let's, let's, well, let's, let's just look that. at this. Uh, before we wrap up, let's, let's look at this. Uh, all the demands that you've had, yes, they are good. But what if the government cannot uh, implement these demands at the time you want them to implement? What are some of the most pressing you think should be uh, addressed before maybe if you are giving time to the government, you can give time to the government. Like they say, what are the lowest hanging fruits that you want the government to pluck before going further to do other things if they cannot implement everything at the same time? <clears throat> Thank you very much. The Nigerian Labor Congress in Lagos State, arising from our sec state executive council meeting, I'm talking for Lagos, on Tuesday, we have resolved through a communique sent to our working governor, Governor Babajide Sonwolu, who is a listening governor, to look into the area of transportation, subsidizing the mass transport in Lagos. At least the BRT carry card can now be subsidized and be given to workers and uh, the, the citizenry in a subsidized manner to enable them to commute easily from their place of work back to their various homes. We have also proposed in our community that in the area of food, stable food items, the government should acquire and resell to the citizen and the workers at a subsidized rate to cushion the effect of this subsidy remover. This will go a long way. We have also equally demanded and proposed to the governor of Lagos State to look in the area of cash grants, at least minimum of 50,000, because Lagos State is a peculiar state. This is a city, we are city workers, and we deserve city wage or city uh, uh, pack package. If other states are proposing 10,000 or 8,000, as the case may be, Lagos should at least be looking towards 50,000. That is our at least minimum proposal to the governor. And we believe Governor Babajide Sonwolu, before the government even increased the last uh, peculiar allowance, he has given 20,000 increment to the workers' salary in Lagos because he understands the pains of Lagos workers in terms of house rent, in terms of school fees, in terms of transportation, the, the, the food of uh, the cost of uh, food items. And every other social need in Lagos are very, very exorbitant. And the governor is so sensitive to quickly do that. So other states should follow suit and do the same thing. We have we are not having much issue with our governor in Lagos State because he's a listening governor. He believes and understands the pains of Lagosians and the workers in Lagos. And he always comes to terms through a proactive policy to cushion the effect of all this likely uh, policy that will affect an ordinary uh, citizen. So we still want to implore the government to engage the labor 
movement, the workers, the, the, the workers representative, Nigerian Labour Congress in particular in Lagos, through the social dialogue and policy that we bring direct succor to the workers and the cities. We are ready to support the government. The okay. so-called uh, rail transport in Lagos, we want the government to fast track it. This will enable easy movement of people okay. in, within, the, within the city. And we believe soon as all these things will come to uh, limelight. Okay. So those are the, 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 the points we are making in Lagos. We don't have much issue with our government in Lagos. We are only trying to let Lagos be a model to other states okay. to follow suit. I'm glad you, you have uh, passed a vote of confidence on the governor of Lagos State. I hope that every other person will see uh, the government of Lagos through the same eyes as you, because otherwise there will be impatience uh, in a few days if these things continue the way they are continuing or the way they are happening right now. We do hope that solutions will come and we'd like to thank the NLC for being proactive and making sure that the government sits up to do what they need to do. Comrade Ismail at Dejumo, thank you so much for coming on thank the show. You. Thank you very much for having me. It's my pleasure to be on the breakfast show. Okay. Thank you. Well, Comrade Adejumo is the chairman Ratau Lagos and uh, the PRO of NLC here in Lagos State. He was talking with us. We are going to take a short break and when we return, we go to other issues. Stay, stay with us.